everybody! In this video, we're going to continue talking about purification techniques in organic chemistry. Most organic reactions involve some kind of an inorganic reagent or produce a salt as a byproduct. And when the reaction is done, we want to separate our organic compound away from everything else in the crude mixture. And the best technique for doing that is extraction. Extraction is defined as a separation of substance from one phase by another phase. And in fact, most of you probably do an extraction every morning when you brew your tea or coffee. During that process, you're essentially doing a solid liquid extraction where the hot water extracts the caffeine and the flavors from the solids of coffee or tea. In an organic chemistry laboratory, however, the most common type of extraction is a liquid-liquid extraction, where one solvent is typically water and another solvent is an organic solvent that is usually not miscible with water. And the piece of glassware that we use to carry out extractions is called a separatory funnel. So before we get into the details of the extraction procedure, let's first talk about how we choose the solvents. We're going to need one solvent that will dissolve the inorganic compounds, but will not dissolve the organic compounds. And a typical choice for this solvent is usually water. For the other solvent, we're going to need something organic, something that will dissolve our organic compounds but will not dissolve the inorganic compounds. And remember that like dissolves like, so to dissolve the organic, we're going to need an organic solvent. And this one should not be miscible with water. And the density of this solvent has to be different than that of water. It could be more dense than water or it could be less dense than water, but it just has to be different. And ideally, this solvent should be non-toxic. Some of the common organic solvents that people use for extractions are chloroform, dechloromethane, diethyl ether, ethyl acetate, hexane, and toluene, just to name a few. All right, now let's talk about the details of the extraction procedure. We start by quenching or diluting the reaction mixture with water. Then we take a separatory funnel and we place it into a ring clamp. And we use a short stem funnel to help us transfer the liquid into it. And make sure that before you start pouring anything into the sub funnel that the stopcock is closed right here. And once you've confirmed that the stopcock is closed, go ahead and pour your reaction mixture into the separatory funnel. Okay, now it's time to add the organic solvent. Choose an organic solvent in which your product is the most soluble in. And pour the organic solvent into the sub funnel. If the density of the organic solvent is less than that of water, then the organic solvent will remain on top of the water layer. And because the two liquids are not miscible, they're going to sit as distinct layers. Then we're going to put a stopper on top of the funnel to close it, and we're going to shake it vigorously but carefully. In most cases, this will result in an emulsion, so we're going to have to let it sit there and settle out so that the two layers reform. Now our top organic layer should contain our organic product. Next, we're going to remove the stopper from the top. We're going to put an Erlenmeyer flask underneath the nozzle of the funnel. And we're going to open up the stopcock to allow the aqueous layer to flow into an Erlenmeyer flask. And when the organic layer approaches the stopcock, promptly close the stopcock so that you don't lose any of your organic solution into the aqueous flask. Now, at this point, you could do a few things. If your organic layer is still quite a bit contaminated with inorganic stuff, then you could continue washing it. So you could essentially do another uh, extraction with a fresh batch of water. Alternatively, if your organic layer now has a, a bunch of tiny little water specks in it, you could wash it one more time, but this time with brine. So brine is essentially a concentrated solution of salt, and this will kind of help to get the water out of the organic layer. And if your aqueous layer has a lot of the organic material in it, then you might want to extract the aqueous layer again with another batch of fresh organic solvent. Then when you got all of your organic compound into the organic solvent, you're going to combine all of the batches of the organic layers together into one, and you're going to see that there are still little tiny specks of water throughout. So you need to remove those by effectively drying that solvent. And you do that by adding a hygroscopic salt to it, for instance, like magnesium sulfate. And this will sort of like suck all of the moisture into the um, salt. Then lastly, you filter off this salt, and then you collect your pure organic solvent that contains your organic product. And in the end, you remove this organic solvent by rotary evaporation under vacuum. All right, now let's take a look at an example of a real reaction mixture. And this one I did fairly recently back when I was a postdoc. In this reaction, we use inorganic catalysts to facilitate the conversion of this dibromoperylene into bis-TMS alkynoperylene. 
The final product is a non-polar organic molecule that fluoresces green, and it should go into our organic layer. Now the remaining salt should end up in the aqueous layer. And the colors of these two layers should be pretty different. Our organic layer should contain this green fluorescent thing, whereas our aqueous layer is going to contain oxidized copper, which is going to be a blue color. All right, now that we know what we're going to be doing, let's head to the lab and see what this looks like. So to get started with our extraction, we're going to need a few things. And first is PPE, which means goggles, gloves, and a lab coat. And the next thing is a fume hood. And we're going to need a few hood because the organic solvent that we're going to be using in this extraction is going to be quite volatile. So we want to make sure that we don't inhale any of it. We're going to need our set funnel, a flask with water, a flask with our organic solvent, hexanes, a flask for aqueous layer, and a flask for organic layer. And we're going to need our reaction mixture and a squirt bottle with hexanes. Now we'll take our reaction mixture and quench it with water. We'll carefully swirl it and open up our sub funnel. Now we're going to get our squirt bottle ready and very carefully transfer the reaction mixture into the sub funnel. And we're going to use our squirt bottle to wash out the rest of the product out of the flask. So give it a good rinse and transfer the remnants into the sub funnel. And I usually rinse a couple of times. It's probably a good idea to use a short stem funnel here, but I just couldn't find one. Now we take our organic solvent, hexanes, and pour it into our sub funnel. Cap the sub funnel. And now we're going to shake it very carefully, but vigorously. During the shaking process, the pressure will build up inside of the sub funnel, so we occasionally have to turn it over and open the stopcock to relieve the pressure. We're going to set our funnel down and let the emulsion settle out. The aqueous layer, which is more dense, will reform itself on the bottom. This layer contains the copper ions, which give it that blue color. And the organic layer, which is less dense, will reform itself on the top. And the organic layer is the one that contains our product. Now it's time to collect our layers. We're going to get our flask for the aqueous layer and put it underneath the funnel. Uncap the funnel. And now we're going to very slowly and carefully open up the stopcock. As the aqueous layer is draining, keep an eye on the levels of both of the solvents in the subfunnel. When the organic layer starts to approach, make sure that you promptly close the stopcock. You want to get as good of a separation as possible between the two layers. Now we're going to set our aqueous layer aside, but don't throw it away yet. And we're going to collect the organic layer by pouring it from the top of the sub funnel into a flask. And we'll give it a little rinse just to make sure that we get as much of the organic product as possible. Now you could do a few things. You can either extract your aqueous layer again, or you can wash your organic layer with brine. Then we'll take our combined organic layer and dry it with magnesium sulfate. We'll scoop a little bit of mag sulfate and drop it into our flask. Then we're going to vigorously stir it to make sure that mag sulfate collects as much of the water as possible. If our solution is dry, then the suspension should look like a snow globe. Now we're going to filter off the mag sulfate and collect our dry organic layer. And lastly, we're going to use the rotary evaporator to remove the solvent and leave our dry product behind.
Good luck with your extractions this week. <laughs>